Yes, my sports to the bone family. Welcome back. Welcome back to another video. Yes, my peeps. Last night we had a whole lot of excitement in the CPL as the pre tournament's favorites, TKR. They were booted out of the competition after going down to Guyana Amazon Warriors. It was definitely an intriguing game, my peeps. If you did not get a chance to see the game, if you did not watch the live, don't worry yourself. I'm going to give you a quick recap here so you can know exactly how the game went. But before we go down into that recap, I'm just going to ask you as per usual, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, you need to go right ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you share the video, leave a like and drop a comment in the comment section. All right. So pre-tournament favorites, Trin Trinibago Knight Riders, they were... Um, as I said, booted from the CPL competition by the Hetmaya and the Guyana Amazon Warriors. And it, the game wasn't even close. It wasn't close at all, my peeps. You know, the Guyana Amazon Warriors, they batted first and they were able to put together a very competitive total. 173 for 6 is what they got. And, you know, the Trinibago Knight Riders, they got off to a good start, but... After they started losing wickets, you know, wickets just kept coming over and over and over and they were unable to chase the score down. Now, as it relates to the players that really stood out, we had Shakib al Hassan, the Bangladesh player that, you know, he, he was the man of the match for the Guyana Amazon Warriors making some runs, picking up a couple of wickets and getting some runs to make sure that the team got across the line. So you could almost say that that was David taking down Goliath once again when you look at the names that the Trinibago Knight Riders team put out there and the names that the, the, the Guyana Amazon Warriors had out there. Now, I think it's the first time in history of, in the history of CPL and this is what, the 10th edition, the first time in the history of the CPL that the Trinibago Knight Riders would have failed to make the playoffs. So they have always been dominant. You understand it's not a case of them this is something that always happened to them and the fact that it happened this season you know quite a few persons are looking because um before the tournament started you know we we're saying that this team looks extremely strong this team seems as if it seems as if it's a little bit unfair to have people like russell pollard poor and narayan Hussein and these guys together on one team and Colin Monroe but it so it so turned out that they were not even able to get over 160 in the tournament any at all. I think the high score was probably 156 or 155 somewhere there about so they are out of the tournament and um, they are going to have to look to change things up. You know the problem with the t before we go down into the scorecard the problem with the TKR I believe throughout this tournament is that they they you know they failed to find a way to start you know they were unable to find a way to start as it relates to the to the top the first six overs of their um six to seven overs of their innings you know they had um Tian Webster at the top at one point in time Sunil Narayan was there for a, for, for the first couple of games they tried um the the, the car, uh, poor and and then they tried Colin Monroe you know but things just did not work out for them my peeps and you know they were unable to chase down that score tonight they 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 it, it was it wasn't good at all my viewers and subscribers because you know as I said with so many veteran T20 players in the team one would have thought that they would have probably given a better account of themselves but it's just one of those things you know while some fans are saying it's going to be a little bit boring without TKR in the playoffs some fans are saying it's boring seeing them over and over in the playoffs so six hour and a half does not the other so let us go through the scorecard here so as I said the Guyana Amazon Warriors batted first and got 173 for six and as I said my peeps this is just a quick recap as we did an entire live show of the game yesterday if you want to see the game here how it went ball by ball you can go back and take a look at the live all right we're not going to go through Every little nook and cranny of the game. So 173 for 6 is what they got. Um, the Guyana Amazon Warriors with Gerbas, the youngster from uh, the youngster from Afghanistan, doing extremely well again, getting another half century, back-to-back -back half century, getting 60 from 42, and he had six sixes in the mix there. No four. Six sixes. Shandapai Hemraji only made four. He got a life pretty early 
in his innings when he was put down by Puran, but um, things turned out that you know worked out well for him. Shea Hope had 14 from 19. Shakib Al Hassan, who ended up being the man of the match, he made 35 from 25 with four fours and a six in the mix. Romario Shepard, Shepard had only six. Shemran Hitmeyer, the captain, he got 23 from 14. You understand? He came in and was definitely looking to take the attack to the bowlers, but he was unfortunately run out for 23. We had Odin Smith, who was left not out on 22 from 7. He and Shemran Hitmeyer were at the crease at the same time, and both men were looking to really, really bring the, the fire to the TKR bowlers. You know, but... um. That yeah, that is basically how it went, my viewers and subscribers. So in terms of how the wicket went, it was six for one, fifty-six for two, one hundred and sixteen for three, one twenty-one for four, one thirty-two for five, and then they went all the way up to one hundred and seventy-three for six. Now where the bowling is concerned for the Trinibago Night Riders, we had Sunel Narayan picking up two for twenty-three from his four overs. While Ravi Rampal had one for fifty-two and um, the Pavilion had one wicket. Now, someone that didn't take any wicket was Sharon Lewis, and I must say that I I was impressed with how he bowled, especially the first couple of overs. He went for some runs in the latter part, but he didn't do too badly at all, my peeps. So one seventy-three, and at the halfway stage, you know the bar, the, the Guyanese fans, some of them were saying, you know, this is enough. Some were saying we are maybe 10 runs short. The Trinibago Knight Riders fans were saying, well, this is not enough. Uh, we are going to get this with the team that we have. And in our truth, and in truth, and in fact, the way in which they started, my peeps, it appeared as if they were going to get to it because they went up to 32 before they lost the last first wicket. And um, then they were, they were going on pretty smoothly. So at the top, their team, Cypher, had 13 from 17. Colin Manuel, 30 from 26. With a four and two sixes in the mix there. We also have Samit Patel who came in and he played well. He played well, my peeps. He had 34 from 27 with three fours and a six. Nicholas Puran was run out um, for one. Direct hit from Shakib Al Hassan got him out. Karan Pollard, he was dismissed, um, dismissed for 13 from 16. And that is how it went for um, Karan Pollard. He was. He was stumped, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Russell, the, not, the next big name player, he went for 12 from 8. And, um, you know, Sunil Narayan, 19. And it didn't, things, things just went downhill from there. So 32 for 1, 68 for 2, 74 for 3, 91 for 4, 100 for 5. Then they up to a 119 for 6, 128 for 7, 132 for 8. 134 for 9, 136 all out. So the wickets came came quick and fast, my peeps. They were just not able to, to cope with the spin of um, Shakib Al Hassan, who took 3 for 20 from his 4 overs. Yes, 3 for 20 from his 4 overs after making 35 runs and taking a catch. He actually got the man of the match there. Uh, we also had Jonas Sinclair, who was pretty impressive also, getting 2 for 26 from 4 overs. While Imran Tyre, um, the leg spinner, had two for 31, and Godikish Moti and Odin Smith both shared a wicket. Uh, Romario Shepard had one over for six. He went wicketless. So, um, Guyana Amazon Warriors winning that game by all of 37 runs. So, as you see, it was not even close. It wasn't like six, seven, eight, nine, or ten runs, 37 runs. So, the Trinibago Knight Riders, even though they came in on. That's why we always say, you know. They are the, the team looks like the strongest team on paper, but on the day the cricket is played on the field, and they are definitely going to have to look at how they go about um, fixing this, my peeps, because it can't continue like this. You know, I am hoping though. One thing that I am hoping is that next year, not saying that I am tired of Karen Pollard, you know, but I am hoping that Nicholas Spuran will be captain in the team next year. You know, I, I don't like the idea of having the West Indies captain. Um, not, not captain in the, the, the local franchise team. You know, um, according to them, they are shielding him away, shielding him from too much pressure going into the T20 World Cup. You know, which I don't really have a problem with that because if, if Pollard is playing, I have no issue with Pollard captaining. You know, I Pollard, Pollard in my opinion, he's not the best captain in the world, but when you look at what is, we have to offer in the region, he's definitely up there as one of you know, the, the, the better captains. So once he's in the team, more than likely he's going to captain. But I definitely want to see Nicholas Poo and 
um, you know, exercising some leadership in the Trinibago Knight Riders team. So yeah, that is basically how it went, my peeps. So after 10 years, Trinibago Knight Riders will not be in the playoffs. You understand? They are not in the playoffs. As I said, at the top, you can almost call it David versus Goliath. You know, um, as I said in the in the live show last night, only a couple of the Trinibago Knight Riders players that I am really sorry for. People like Akil Hussein, you know, um, well, James Seas is out injured. People like um, Puran and them guys. Those are the guys that, that, that are still playing for West Indies and I definitely want to see them um, do well. But in terms of the so-called big name players that did not perform, I couldn't care less. It's the same thing for the other franchise teams. Once they have big name players that are, are not paying attention to West Indies cricket, I couldn't care less what happened to them in their franchise team. So, um, yeah, that is it for this one, my peeps. And uh, hopefully you are seeing this video before the Jamaica Talawas game. Just to let you know, we are going to be doing a live show in that game, alright? Live watch along. So, big up on yourself, peeps.